Hello and welcome everyone to the Liberty Church once again and welcome to all our various locations in uh, Croydon, St. John's Wood, Canary Wharf and of course our Woodford people. Can I hear a loud shout of a hallelujah wherever you are? Hallelujah. And our uh, people online, our one love people, God bless you. It's always, it's always a joy to have everyone on board especially on at our Sunday services. And today, I'm excited because we're stepping into, this is our first Sunday in the month of March. Now, um, uh, regret, regrettably, I am not there physically present with you, but as you can see, I am there in spirit, and I'm also there virtually. But believe it or not, if you just focus on the message, it will feel like as though I'm really physically there. And so I would like for you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 31 uh, from verse 1 to 7 and verses 11 to 13. Can you tell three people next to you and tell them you are really blessed to be sitting next to me. You're really blessed to be sitting next to me. And then also tell them that this month, this month, this month is going to be extraordinary. This month is going to be a real blessing and this month is going to catapult me into greater things. And I believe this very strongly because this is our month of power or our month of the supernatural. So turn your Bibles quickly with me to the book of Genesis chapter 31. And we're looking at verse 1 to 7 and 11 to 13. And it says, now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob has taken away all that our, our was our father's and from what was our father's, he has acquired all this wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable towards him as before. And then he says, Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. God is telling somebody right here that you need to return to where he picked you up from. You need to return to your former disciplines, and he says, as a result of that, he will be with you. And then he says, so Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not favorable towards me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my might, I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not allow him to hurt me. I prophesy to every single person under the sound of my voice, those watching on site and those online, that the Lord will not allow the enemy to hurt you. I said the Lord will not allow the enemy to hurt you. And then if you look at Genesis 31 with me to verse, uh, from verse 11 to 13, okay, it brings it into further picture for us. And it says, then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, <clears throat> saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And then he said, lift your eyes now and see. All the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. And I am the God of Bethel. There's somebody here watching today, and God is saying, I've seen all that your boss is doing to you. I've seen all that uh, uh, the, the, the people around you are doing to you, and the Lord is beginning to do things to work those things out in your favor. And he says, and I am the God of Bethel where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. I want you to take notes of those words as we look into another scripture verse. This will be shorter. Uh, but I believe this other scripture verse in the book of Ecclesiastes will uh, put better context into the thoughts and, you know, the concepts we're going to grapple with today. And I believe the, the concepts we're about to grapple with are very integral to your whole Christian work and your, and, your, and your race with God, as it were. And so it's important for you to listen intently, you know, try to avoid the temptation of getting distracted. And he says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, and verse 4 to 6. Some of you might have heard it before. This is a scripture verse I usually read at weddings. 
and, um, and you will see why. And it says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they do not know that they do evil. It says, do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you on earth, therefore, let your words be few. Can you tell three people next to you, say, let your words be few. Let your words be few. Let your words be few. And then this is the real, the, the real uh, um, uh, significant part of the scripture verse. It says, when you make a vow, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Then he says, pay what you have vowed. Tell your neighbor, say, pay what you have vowed. <laughs> Better not to vow than to do what? Uh, and uh, that to vow and not pay. Do not let your, your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the works of your hands? Father Lord, we pray by your spirit that you will not be angry at our excuse because we will not give any excuses. And we pray that you will not, there will be no occasion or condition or situation under which we'll find that you destroy the works of our hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to look at somebody next to you. Say, this month, God will release his supernatural hand and the power to act on my behalf in the various facets of my life. Well, good morning, every single person. And uh, today, the title of my message is called The Mystery of Extraordinary Help. The Mystery of Extraordinary Help. If you want a subti subtitle, it will be called How to Secure Supernatural Help. How to Secure Supernatural Help. Well, I believe very strongly that you, you cannot go very far as a Christian if you don't have access to the supernatural realm. And this is why, you know, come year in, year out, yeah, when we, when, when we get to the third month of the year, we always tend to deal with the supernatural dimension. You know, it is either themed the month of power or the month of the supernatural. Why? Because for us as Christians, you cannot say you're a Christian if there's no power. You know, the, the, the word Christ means Christos, which means the anointed one. Okay? And when we talk about the mystery of, of, of extraordinary help, remember, this is our year of extraordinary results. I think it's once again important to define what it means to help. And let's not assume that we all know what it means to help. Okay? And usually, you know, many of us will pray that God will send you your help. And I pray that God will send you your help at this month. Uh, that amen can be better. Yeah. And so when we say God will send you your helper or help, what does it mean? The definition to help means to make easy or possible by offering assistance. So I decree and declare that God is going to send someone that will make things easy for you. To make things possible for you. Somebody that will offer you assistance in the name of Jesus. But today, I want to talk about extraordinary help. And when we speak about extraordinary help... We are talking about help from the supernatural realm. Help from where? The supernatural realm. So it is one thing to have when we say, oh, you will meet a destiny helper. In your mind, you're thinking that maybe on the train, in the bus, or when you go to a party or somewhere else, somebody will introduce you to somebody. That is good because that is natural help. But extraordinary help is help from a realm beyond the natural. Where, as it were, you get help from spirits. <laughs> Okay, let's put it this way. Help from the Holy Spirit and help from angels. I see somebody being helped supernaturally this month and, and in this year. And when you get help from the supernatural realm, that means, you know, the supernatural, when you break it down, like I say, is when you have natural in form but superior in performance. And there's somebody here, even though you are natural in form, in whatever you do, your operation will be superior in performance. Uh, that amen can be better. Uh, those ginkroiden, let's hear it louder. You know, uh, 
uh, even though you may be small in stature, listen to this, you, you will supersede your contemporaries. Even though you, 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 you may not dress like everybody else, listen to this, they won't see you coming because you're going to get help from another atmosphere. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me buttress this by giving a story, you know, when we speak concerning supernatural help. So one of my key mentors that trained me in the area of supernatural um, and, you know, uh, that dimension, he, he, he gave a story, a real story. He said he, there was a, a gentleman he went to school with, there was a colleague. And this gentleman was a committed Christian, one of the most diligent people. You know, um, growing up, they called those kind of people SUs. That's the scripture pastor. This is scripture, sorry, scripture union. And, you know, so when he was fasting, he fasted extra. When he was this, so he was very diligent. But the challenge was that it didn't show, the, the results didn't show in his life. And, you know, and the, here he was, not as diligent as this guy, and he was seeing results. He was passing his exams. He was breaking through. He got married on time. Financially, he was doing well. But this man seemed everything was going down. So he said one day he was praying for his friends, and then God revealed to him, you know, uh, the root of the problem. So he went and, and, and told the guy and said to him, he said, look, uh, you told me you had this challenge and you're frustrated and all of that. But God opened my eyes to see what your challenge was. And so he asked him, he said, what is your name? And so he told him, maybe his name is something like John Fadei. Now, Fadei is, I mean, I'm from the southwestern part of Nigeria, which is the Yoruba-speaking uh, part of it. The Fadei is, is, is a, a name, quite a common name. And he said, God opened his eyes to how that name came about. And so when he told him, you know, what he had seen, this gentleman went back and asked his father, who, who had been told stories by his grandfather, you know, about how that name came about. So apparently, maybe two or three generations prior, uh, this, this man's maybe great-grandfather was a hunter, and he was in the bush hunting and, you know, trying to, you know, catch game, you know, blah, 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 but was frustrated and was not successful. And then all of a sudden, you know, a spirit showed up in the, in the forest and said to him that, look, you have been going around without any, you know, uh, uh, any, any results. That, do you know, if you covenant with you, me, if you make a deal with me, I will help you. I will come into your life and you will always be successful at hunting. And you know what? I will also protect you. So I will prosper you. You will always catch the best game. You will be the, you will be the best hunter. And then, you know what, you will also, I will also protect you. Nobody will be able to kill you before time. No bullets will be able to penetrate you, as it were. So he made a deal and said, yes, I want those powers. But then he said to him, um, uh, but there are, there are conditions. You will always have to, to worship me, and you will have to be, your, all your family will have to be devoted to me. And one of the signs of the devotion will be that you will carry my name. And, and then he, he said that, and you will have to give these sacrifices every, maybe something like every year or something to that effect as a sign of devotion. And he said, that's not a problem. And he made the deal. And then he says, and so from now on, you know, what your name is, my name is Ifa. That's the name of the deity. And he says, and then your name will have to be Ifa Dei. Ifa Dei means, de, you know, uh, Ifa is a deity, yeah? Uh, but Dei, Ifa, Ifa Dei means um, uh, uh, Ifa locked this one up, ties this one up. And now, it may look like a simple thing, but what happened there is that that, that spirit, in a sense, locked that man up into a covenant, into some kind of a covenant agreement that brought about, you know, the eventual benefit was superior performance. And you see, when you look at that story, all truth is, is parallel in that, you know, in terms of the negative supernatural, only it mimics what happens in the positive su supernatural. The demonic supernatural mimics the divine supernatural. And we see that here that this man was helped by the spirit. And in the, in the, in the, in the divine supernatural, the proof of the anointing is superior 
performance or results. Now, sadly, many of us, you know, believe that, oh, when we see somebody doing very well, extraordinarily well in the world, say, he's using something. You know, so that means we have more faith in the demonic supernatural, uh, but we don't, we don't have enough faith in God's power. You say, oh, he's using something. Oh, he must be, yeah, yeah, he can't be that good. There's something he's, he's, he's used, is diabolical, diabolical. <laughs> what about you? Why are you not divine, divinolical? You know, so you and I need supernatural or extraordinary help. And the Bible talks about in, in, in scripture because we see this in scripture. So why don't we see it in our lives? The Bible, the Bible says in the book of Second Chronicles 26, 1 to 7 and 15. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. That's Uzziah. God helped him against the Philistines and the Arabians. I see God helping you against your enemies. I see God helping you against all those that come against you. I see God helping you, helping you against the elements militating against you. And he says, and he, this is Uzziah, he made devices in Jerusalem and invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So Uzziah still had weapons, but he was, as his, his battles were assisted by God. The same way David still used his weapon, remember? He used a sling and a stone, but it, 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 his stone was not ordinary. By the time he left his catapult, you know, the power of God, you must have had like six angels or more behind that stone, so that it, the, the, it was with precision he hit Goliath's head, and the power, the potency of that, that impact was, was just devastating. I see God putting his power behind your hand. I see God putting his power behind your effort. And then the Bible says, so his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. Now, if you look, remember the story of this hunter, Ifadei, and you superimpose it on this, you will find that they are almost parallel. The Bible says, for as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. For as long as uh, uh, that man sought Ifa, Ifa made him to prosper as a hunter. Ifa also protected him. And we see here that the Bible says, God also helped Uzziah against the Philistines. Ifa helped that man against his own enemies. And so today we want to talk about the mystery of supernatural or extraordinary help. And the mystery of extraordinary help is hidden in the power of covenants. What do I mean by that? Listen to this. People, you know, a lot of Christians are frustrated. And they say, oh, but they said God does this and God does that. But why isn't this happening for me? It's because you don't understand the power of covenant. And that, you know, the, 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 you know, many of us think certain things are auto automatic. That the moment you just become a Christian, then everything works. No, not necessarily. You may have something, but you may not know how to work it. When, and the, when you look at Daniel 11.32, it brings out the point I'm trying to talk about. It says, those who do wickedly against the covenant. Somebody say, <laughs> don't do wickedly against the covenant. <laughs> you know, it says, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be what? Strong, and they shall what? Carry out great exploits. What the scripture is essentially saying in summary is that there are, there's a set of people who compromise with the covenant. And he says, these people will be, will be taken by flattery by, by, the, by the enemy, as it were. They will, become, they will be compromised. You know, they will be weakened. But then he says, there is a group of people. He says, but the people who know their God, they shall be what? Strong. And they shall do what? The word know there is actually the people who know their covenant God. Or who have a covenant relationship with God. Does that make sense? It, you know, you, I'm sure some of you have, have heard the word that said Adam knew his wife. Yeah, you know, to, to know somebody means that you have to be in covenant relationship to be in that kind of intimacy. So it's saying, for the people who know their God shall be what? Strong and they will do what? Exploits. I decree and declare that in the next 
uh, 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 few weeks to months, you'll begin to understand the, your covenant rights, your covenant privileges, and your covenant benefits. And you'll begin to walk in, in the midst of it in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, I want to speak about the benefits or some of the benefits of, of, of covenant. Okay? And one of the benefits is supernatural protection. Let me give you a, a, another real example. I mean, uh, there's a gentleman that's actually quite close to me. I remember the very first time I saw him, we were at a, a particular meeting in a church somewhere. You know, I didn't know him personally. It was a night vigil. But my first encounter was, of him was that we were at this meeting. And incidentally, the, 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 person, the guest minister at this meeting was that, this is my mentor I was speaking about. Who helped to, who helped to diagnose his, his colleague's problem and said that your problem is the problem of Ifa Dei. And so by this time, I hadn't heard the story, but, you know, we were at this meeting together, and then you, all of a sudden, I saw this man, this, this well-built built young man, handsome guy, you know, looked buff and all of that, all of a sudden being thrown all about the place. Not just, not just falling, being thrown, thrown, thrown all over the whole place. And I just did not understand what it was. It was many years later, I'm talking about almost 30 years later, you know, I had a conversation with him and I was like, look, there's something about your life. What exactly is it? And he said, you know what? That while he was in school many years ago, in uni, that, you know, there were some boys in the occult. In, 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 some, in many Nigerian universities, they are, they are plagued with, you know, cultists who, who plot, plan, and kill people. And so he said, you know, these cultists came and somebody, a friend of his in the other court came to warn him that, you know, another cult, some other cult boys were looking for him to kill him. And that he, need to get, he needs to go and find a way to get protection. And that he remembered this person taking him to um, a, a, a fetish priest, you know, a, a, a house or place. And, you know, he said to her, this person will protect you. And he said, the day he walked into the, into the, into the man, as he opened the door, the man said, get, get out, get, get, leave, leave my house, leave my house, leave, get, get out, don't come in, don't come in. And he was like, what was that? He said, you have too much light. He says, you know, that if he walked into his, into his house or within his domain, he will neutralize, what he was carrying will neutralize, you know, his supposed fetish powers. And so he was like, but I need your help. He said, well, the only way you will get my help is if I come outside to you and I put some, uh, he had to put, put some marks on him. As in, I think, what do they call that now? Is it um, incisions? He had to put some incisions on him and, and, and say some things. And when he put the incisions on him and said some things, he now said, okay, now you can come in. Now, what little did he know was that, what that man did was that he, 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 he uh, what's the word now? He nullified the power of the angel that followed him and what did he quenched his light and you know so the angel that followed him was protective and so he discharged the angel and what he did was he now employed the forces of a demonic strong man to now take over his life and so what was happening is that now he was being pro pro protected by this deity this demonic strong. So no courtiers could find him because of the protection of, of this strong man that this fetish priest had brought into his life. But at the same time, the angel God that God gave to him had left him. He'd been chased away by reason of this covenant. Now the guy had become a Christian. And now he, he was everywhere he went to, he would be thrown around the whole place. Why? Because this demonic strong man was the one, the guardian of his life. I decree and declare that anybody walking in any contrary covenant, any, any spirit, any dark spirit that might have been employed to begin to watch over your life, but is really there to frustrate and destroy your life, I decree and declare that this month it is finding its way. I decree and declare that you'll be loose from such powers in the name of Jesus. The second benefit of, of a covenant is supernatural power. And this comes in different ways. Supernatural power, which is ability to do better than others. It can come in terms of, you know, um, most times in those times, it will be physical might. 
or you know it can be intellectual prowess political prowess and you or, or whatever or speed some people when it's, it's wrestling boxing and then they go and get power so that they can be better you know fighters as it were and you know what um, I, i've seen this in real life and so i remember when i was pastoring you know uh, the, 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 in my the last pastorate a guy came from a nigerian black guy came all the way from austria at the time we were on television and you know <laughs> we were on various channels in europe and this guy came and he said oh he needed to see me I, you know i i kind of saw him at the, he wanted to see me at the, before the service and i said no 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 you can't just, uh, i may be able to see you after the service and he was sat you know with everybody else while i was preaching my message anyway while i was preaching you know I, 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 I came and I was giving some examples and I happened to be in front of him. And then I said, I, I broke the example and I went off to the other side. And I, and you know, and then he just said, he just shouted at the old, something like, oh, why didn't you give the example here or something like that? And I said, wait, I'm coming back. And I came back and I said, okay, I will give the example of a footballer. He said, I am a footballer. You know, and to cut a long story short, <laughs> Before that service was over, the guy was just somersaulting all over. I'd never seen anything like that. You, you know, it was almost like as though, again, you know, each time I was ministering, he could not stand it. You, the moment I came around him, somebody would throw him, almost literally, you know, <laughs> like, uh, what do they call those things in the circles? Those guys who do like acrobatics. Somebody would just keep throwing him away. And it was after the service. He told me that that was why he came to see me. That he had watched my TV program, and my, the TV program, you know, showed that, oh, that I was prophetic, this and that, and that, you know, and he felt he needed to travel down to come and, you know, help me, uh, to ask me to help him. I said, okay, well, how can I help? He said, well, before he came to, down to Europe, yeah, that he went to a fetish priest, you know, to secure powers to help him with his football <laughs> and you know he did certain things and they you know made uh, um, you know incisions on him and this and told him to drink this and all of that and that and since then he has been doing very well in football but he's been i don't know i think he had come to about seven years and he says and the thing is not working <laughs> it's not it's not the thing is going down <laughs> and that he needs help and that he's having demonic dreams and this and that and you know and he regrets what he did that can i help him now that's an example of supernatural power and you know securing supernatural help okay and then there's what we call supernatural intelligence some people go and they 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 they, 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 they get this they go and secure this part. You see, the reason why I'm saying these things, some of you say, well, but I didn't do that. Well, let me say this to you. Many of us, the challenges we face is not because of what we did, but because of what somebody did on our behalf that is still working within our bloodline. Oh, believe it or not, it doesn't matter that you're, you're in Oxford or Cambridge or uh, Harvard or, or, or Stanford or INSEAD. Listen to this. <laughs> Uh, uh, spirits, they don't speak, they don't understand your English. And the issue is if you have a covenant, I will show you in, sh in, in a short while, it is for many generations. They, they don't relent. And you will find that many, of, many people, so this, this guy called the Fadei, as it were, his name is shortened to Fadei, but he may come to England and then now begin to call his name, say, well, the, it's, the name is too long, and then his name is now John Day. <laughs> And then his friends call him John Day, John Day, John Day, you know. And, you know, so you may lose the, but the spirit does not lose its hold. Because the spirit knows his name. It doesn't matter how much they shut in the name. He, he understands his luck and his power on, on, on the person. Also, there's what you call supernatural intelligence. And we see that in scripture. And I also know of many demonic people who are so wise. They seem so wise. But it, it's by um, endowment by spirits. They, they know things they shouldn't know. I remember a friend telling me he went to cast out, a, he was in South Africa and he was casting out a demon. And the demon was speaking, you know, for in, he said, you, you, you are here. 
you came here, you, you cast us out in, 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 in Oshodi, in Shogule. Now you are coming to cast us out here in Soweto. You know, why, why, why are you chasing us around the place? Now, the people, the, the person who, through whom the person was speaking through, did not know where Shogule was. Did not know where <laughs> Oshodi was. But you know what? Demonic spirits are intelligent. So, can you imagine a, a South African guy who's never been to Nigeria t- talking about places? And also, this my mentor has he told me that, you know, there are some spirits is casting out and they are giving you mathematical formulas. <laughs> you know, they, they know, they know theories and stuff like that. Why? Because, you see, they are able to come into people's lives and give them supernatural intelligence. Oh, so you're, you're, are you doubting me? Well, if you look at scripture, you see that uh, uh, Solomon made a covenant with the spirit when he gave so many sacrifices. And the Bible says the spirit of God came and gave him what, what? Wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. And he was wiser than all the kings of the earth. Okay. Another thing that, you know, there is a benefit is called supernatural fertility. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, <laughs> believe it or not, many, many women at some time or the other, you know, it could be your mother or your grandmother. They have a delay in childbirth, and then they suddenly say, ah, let's go and see one old man somewhere. He's known for giving people children. Then they give you something, and they give you some water to drink, or they ask the person to bathe in water. Now, you might have never gone to a river before, but two, three people up and down your line might have to have gotten you. And, and, and what it is is that, I will show you in a short while, that these are, these are what you call covenants that they remain. So you, you know, you went to school in, you know, <laughs> in so and so, yeah, Winchester, and you speak better English than the Queen. But the issue is that if I day, which means if I is, is locking this, has locked this one up. Now, you know, so when we talk about supernatural fertility, you've heard me talk about the story of when I went to Calgary and God told me that there was a particular lady who had been married for five years and the reason why she had, didn't have any children was that a crocodile had eaten up her, had been eating up her baby. And you, you remember the story. And, and when I said that, the woman was like a bit confused, but then a few minutes later, her husband came and leaned across to, her, to the pastor and said, you know, um, they are from Cameroon, and indeed his surname means crocodile when translated into English. So does that make sense? When God was saying to me that a crocodile, you know, has been eating up the child, what God was saying is that this, that woman that you're going to see who is looking for a child, the reason why she doesn't have a child is because somebody in the family made a covenant with a crocodile. And that crocodile has been taking up the the spirit of the crocodile has been taken up by the child. And it is evidenced by the name of the man. Remember, I said that these spirits, when they empower you or they give you superior performance, they usually ask for certain demands, devotions. And one of them is usually you bear their name. Uh, uh, and so I saw this in real time. And some of you, if you look at your names or sign, you say, oh, it doesn't really matter. Your name, Ogunshin or Ogunshaya, you know, and Ogun is a deity. Or oh, so, 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 and so, you know. If you look at the, the you, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that we should get so finicky and so, and begin to get afraid. But you, you'll find when you look well enough, you might, you might find that there may be signs of a covenant. Uh, and there's also the benefits of supernatural favor. Some people, you know, also go and, and ask for, you know, a, a, a deity or supernatural being to give them favor at work. And, you know, and what, what is favor? Favor is when, you, you know, you, you, there are a number of you and you are selected amongst many when you become a favorite. Okay? And so this priest says, you know, uh, uh, well, I'll give you powers and you will always stand out. You will always be the one that will be the attractive one. So you'll find that many women in their growing years, they went to say, ah, please, nobody is, wants to marry me. Nobody is selecting me. And then someone said, ah, just take this, just rub this, just, okay, we will, you, 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 you know, use this, use this, use this, and all of that. But what you don't know is that there is a demonic strength man that might have been released into your life that is now attracting people. Attracting people. 
But then it becomes a problem when now that you're a Christian because you're getting the help of this demonic strong man. And, you know, and this also plays out when some, somebody is looking for, some people are looking for financial prosperity and say, ah, I set up this business, the business is not working. And I say, don't worry, I'll give you something. Just put it on your shop, just do this, just do this. And then what will happen is that you begin to attract customers. I remember growing up, there was one place that we used to go and eat. I won't mention the name of the place. And this woman's rice was so sweet, but the place was so dirty. And, and you know, people will queue up, they will line up, you know. <laughs> and, and I'm talking of businessmen, I'm talking of, you know, really high and mighty people. In, in the middle of the night, queue up with their bowl, and the woman will be will screaming at people and take, even take their plate bowls and throw it away. And they will go and pick up the bowl and come back and join the queue. If I mention the name, some of you will know because you've eaten our food. <laughs> you know, but what people said is that one day, I don't know, I wasn't there that day, that one day the woman began to confess you know, about her powers, you know. And so, I mean, whether you believe it or not, you know what? Just take it from me, these things are real. But I know we're in England, or we're in whatever part of the world, and we're like, oh, what's he talking about? Well, this, what I'm talking about is how the supernatural realm, yeah, interplays with the natural realm. And that even though you wear a suit, even though you're an investment banker, you know, your name may be John Day. And... You know, you're an investment banker that works with, you know, uh, J.P. Morgan or Credit Suisse or whatever. But hold on, maybe your continuous frustration or near, near, near success syndrome might be as a result of a covenant that is an opposing covenant. And you're a Christian. So let me quickly talk about covenant, understanding the technology of covenant. What, 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 what's this about? So, if we're going to understand the, co co the technology of co covenant, you know, you first of all need to understand what that, for, for, for this power to operate, you need something called altar. Somebody say altars. Uh, tell three or four people, ask them, say, uh, do you have an altar? Tell them again, say, you, be you better have an altar. Tell two people, say, you had better get an altar. And if you have one, you have better make sure it's operative. <laughs> what is an altar? Altars are the technology used in trapping spiritual reality and the powers of the supernatural beings. What do I mean by that? You know, I, I was thinking about it and I began to think that what's the best way to illustrate it? And I, 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 I think I found the, the, the almost near, near perfect way. So, what is an altar? An altar is essentially a device in, that is used to trap, you know, supernatural powers or your supernatural entities. Remember I told you that this gentleman, this, this friend of mine, he went to this fetish priest and the fetish priest said, hold on, hold on, uh, you, let me do this to you. And then he put an in initiation mark on him. And then all of a sudden he said, you can come in now. And then he says, now you, these spirits will protect you. And, and, and what was that? So the, the, the mark that was put on him was, in a sense, some kind of token that attracted the spirit and trapped that spirit to remain in his life. And, and this is the kind of technology of altars. But, so here, I have here, I bought this a, a few years ago. I actually bought it on the plane. It's actually a mod, modem. And it says, um, apparently... I bought it because the, it, the, it's called the world modem. It's supposed to work all over the world. But let's leave that for now. But let's say you buy a, a, a modem for, you know, um, internet use. Yeah? An O2 one or Vodafone or something or the other. Yeah, this is a device that, even though it's just a square object, it's used to trap, trap waves. It, I don't know if it's called electromagnetic waves or, 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 or waves that would transmit communication and power so it's, an, it's an, uh, supposedly ordinary device but the, the, the when you get those waves that those waves has the power to communicate signals pictures and audio and you can stream <laughs> you can watch youtube and all of that now that's amazing isn't it if you have an understanding of that the same way yeah an altar is a device that is used to trap spiritual powers 
and put them in one place. Oh, and so wherever you take these two, as it were, then you can communicate. You can watch Sky News, you can watch YouTube, you, you can watch, because of a modem, you can watch this online. Okay, now, if you don't have an altar, you will have to keep trying to explain the things you have not experienced. As a Christian, if you do not have an altar, you are going to have to keep trying to explain things you have not experienced. So you will say, oh, well, um, you know what they talk about? When they talk about, you know, the supernatural, it is like this. <laughs> but if you don't have a, a, an activated altar, this is this, you will not, you will not, exp, you will not have the reality. I, have, I know people who keep trying to talk about angels and they, all they use is examples in the Bible, like in Daniel. But what about your own examples? Or people want to talk about a healing or a miracle, you know, and they keep saying, oh, like it happened in so, so, and so. What about, why is it, is it not active in your own life? It means that your altar might not be activated. And listen to this, we have become theologically astute but spiritually impotent. Which means we have people who are good at explaining the scriptures but not demonstrating it. Uh, uh, and, and the reason why this is the case is because of the impotence of our altars. Now, so, uh, uh, when I want to, when, in order to explain this to you, so I've, I've told you about an altar. Everybody say altar. Okay. The second thing that is important is covenant. And what is this? It is a covenant that makes altars powerful. So, the altar by itself is what? Impotent. So, we have here this device let's call it an o2 what do they call it modem yeah and uh, but this is a world sim modem what i found is i i've had this for two three years but it's just been in the box you know why i tried putting it on the first day i connected it to to the power source and i was like shut down i thought the thing would start working but it did not work you know why because i did not have a contract <laughs> So what they were essentially saying to me is that, you know, I, I have to put a SIM card in it and activate the what? Contract. If not, I'm not going to get Wi-Fi. And the same way you and I, listen to this, you have, the moment you become a Christian, you are a potential, you are an altar. But there, unless you, you, you activate your covenant, Listen to this. You'll just be going around and saying, uh, he that is in me is greater than he that is war. But you know what? <laughs> Your altar is not working. It has not been activated. You know? And, and the, then you say, uh, uh, um, uh, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of my guy. You'll be shish kebab. When trouble comes, why? Because you don't have any activation. Uh, and what does that mean? <laughs> it is the covenant that makes the altars powerful. And the purpose, let me give, use this to uh, explain. The purpose of a marriage covenant is that it ensures that we do not change our minds. Did you get that? Even when our circumstances change. Hello, did you hear that? Please, listen to this. When you go to O2 and you try to set this up, yeah, you know, you know they prefer, there's pay as you go. But O2, don't, they will not give you any benefits for pay as you go because it's okay. Uh, you want the freedom of, to be able to just go and, as you come you, and not use them and things like that. The only time they will give you a benefit, in fact, that they will say to you that, you know, you can get an iPhone and after two years, you know, that kind of thing. Or that you can get so many thousand data and stuff like that. Is that when you set up a contract with them and then you are paying something every month, maybe like 50 pounds every month or 100 pounds. And listen to this, the agreement also, what's the name of those um, um, gyms, health clubs also like that. And you know, they want a long term agreement and you're paying this and you know if you don't do this, then you are the one that loses. Now the point is this, the reason why they try to do that is they try to secure you into a, into a into, they lock you into something so that regardless of whether you have money or not, you are paying this thing. <laughs> regardless of whether, you know, so I have a gym, gym, uh, what do they call those things? 
gym uh, the membership my guy <laughs> i i haven't been to that gym in in about seven months but they are collecting you know so that's the way covenants work it's, it doesn't matter whether you are using the benefits or not they want to secure that look the the, the thing doesn't change it does not change and regardless of what and spirits still keep their own part and make the their demands for thousands of years even after the agreement so you know i found out that i have an ee i've had an ee contract for i'm talking about yes nine, two ees in fact i don't know how two that collects 15 pounds on two occasions from my account every month and it's been there for about eight nine years so you know what? Every month, the thing just comes out of my head. Every month, one day I was like, what's this? E -E. I don't, ah, one summer that we're going as a family traveling, my wife said, oh, it will be cheaper to, since then, I only use that phone for, <laughs> for, for maybe like three weeks. To be, so now that's how spirits are. Uh, you, if this John Day, who went to Winchester, and then eventually to Oxford, and now works in, in, in Credit Suisse, as it were. He's now married, and they have lovely kids, and they don't even know where they're from, their, their grandfather is from. This spirit is still taking tribute. And he's still, he's still making sure that they don't go beyond a certain point. And, you know, and the covenant with God, he says, is even up to a thousand generations. And, and even if we forget our part of a covenant, God doesn't forget his. A covenant is signed in, with vows. I, I, and this is where we're going to. And what's a vow? It's a solemn pledge to a deity committing oneself to an act. And, I mean, I hope, you're, I, hope, I hope you're understanding this. And I hope you're, you know, and I hope it's, it's helping you. Why? Because listen to this. This is central to our Christian faith. Now, I said this cannot work unless there is a contract but you cannot just make a contract anywhere when it comes to spiritual things the same way you see when it comes to marriage you can't just pick a girl here and say you love her okay let's go uh, let's let's say to ourselves that i will love you for the rest of my life and i will always be there for you yeah, yeah and you say let's say it on the bus <laughs> no <laughs> it's that's not going to hold so what needs to happen is that you have to look for a registered place. They call it a registry. Or go to a court or go to a place that is licensed, a church that is licensed. And then you make those vows. You are, it's called an exchange of vows. When you say those words, the, the words that you say at that registered place is different from what you said on the bus or in your room. It, it, it will be documented by the register that you made these words and you made a promise to love this person till so 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 after that you can't cannot say that you did not mean what you said you can't <laughs> you said no no actually i changed my mind no you can't if you said it on a, in a bus or just anywhere else you could have said well it was a joke but the moment you call a registrar <laughs> and you and it was is documented you cannot that you are joined to that person your name becomes their name yeah listen to this on your documents anywhere you go they will come up as your husband or wife unless you go to the divorce court the same in the realm of the spirit <laughs> that is why we always tell people to choose carefully because whoever you are joined to as it were you know it is once you go to a registry or court it is permanent and this is where he says in the book of genesis chapter 28 verse 20 to 22 he says then jacob made a vow saying if god will be with me and keep me in this way that i am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that i come back to my father's house in peace then god shall be my god and this stone which i have set as a pillar shall be god's house and all that you give me i will surely give a tent to you does this look like that agreement that that man made with the father if you give me powers that protect me and if you give me powers that make me 
you know, the, the best hunter in town, blah, blah, blah. I will change my name to your name, and my children will always serve you, and we will always bring tribute to you. What is a covenant? It is an agreement between two or more parties which requires sacrifice on both parties, usually signed in blood, and with consequences of divine judgment if broken. Now, what are the components of a covenant? And I'm beginning to round up with this. The components of a covenant are one, a transaction. There's a covenant, there's usually negotiation. I say, okay, what will you do for me? Okay, I will give you protection. I will prosper you. And, you know, your children will always have this and that. So there's always a, a negotiation and then there's an exchange. Everybody say transaction. What's a transaction? A transaction is, listen to this, I bought this phone. Yes? Let's just use, for example, let's say it's a hundred pounds. I bought this phone for a hundred pounds. So this phone was in the shop. I told the gentleman, I like it, the phone, innit? I want, to, I want to buy it. And then the guy said, well, uh, you can like the phone, but the phone <laughs> is not moving from here. And then, but he says, but if you transact, if you bring a hundred pounds, that's the value of the phone, yeah, and I take the hundred pounds, then you can take the phone home. That's a transaction. So the same with the covenant. It always involves the transaction. You say, well, I want power. Or you say, I, uh, I want protection. He says, well, well, uh, you can't just have protection. Like that friend of mine who went to the fetish priest, he says, I want protection. I say, okay, don't worry, but I need to uh, uh, put an incision on you. And he thinks, oh, the incision is just for protection. He doesn't know that it's a transaction. I give you protection, but then you're going to be devoted to me for the rest of your life. And your children will be devoted to me for the rest of their lives. You go, for, you go to ask for a child, and they say, don't worry, we'll give you a child. In fact, if you want twins, we'll give you twins. But you know what? Uh, those twins, you, you, you are going to always be devoted, every single member of your family will be. And if you're not, you're, you fail in your devotion, somebody will die. I know this is a Sunday message, but it is important whether you are Sunday, Friday, or Wednesday, to understand that these covenant realities operate. Whether you come to church or you don't come to church, the same way the laws of gravity operate, that these are the guiding principles of spirituality. Okay, it's not about just the songs that you sing, you and I sing. And that is why this month, we need to have an understanding. The reason why, listen to this, people keep coming, I say, Pastor, I prayed, I prayed, nothing happened, is because we, you don't understand the mystery of covenant. Uh, and when you understand it, then we we'll begin to unlock, you know. So the first thing about the component of the covenant is that there is a transaction, there's an exchange. Then there are terms of agreement. Somebody said terms of agreement. And what, what is the term of agreement? So listen to this. When I, if you open this up, it says, listen to this, 20 pounds for 40 gigabytes of what? Data. Now, <laughs> that is the transaction. If you give me 20 pounds, you will get what? 40 gigabytes of. Now, many phone contracts. So this, I think this is pay as you go, I think. But for a phone contract, it will, be, it will not be so much like that. It will be, there are terms of agreement you sign. And it's, and it's like, if you give us 20 pounds monthly, you will get so much this and that. But if you don't pay, what we do is we terminate your contract. Or what it is, is many people are tired. I bought, <laughs> I bought a car recently and, you know, when they, uh, by the time the, 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 the day came from the, what do they call that? Is it direct debit? I just, I just found out something was just swallowed from my account. We, they, they didn't ask anything because I'd already, the time, I'd already signed the terms of my agreement. I just said, oh, oh, ah. What was that? Uh, you know, just, just like that. How, how can Toyota just be taking my... Yeah, you signed it. You, or somebody signed it on your behalf. So there are terms and agreements, and they don't ask you to just come, just take a pregnancy. And you're wondering what's happening. You say, well, I wasn't involved. Somebody signed it. I decree and declare that every evil covenant operative in your life is being broken today. I decree and declare that God is opening your eyes to the, to the demands of the covenant. And what, what is the demands of the covenant? These are, the demands are, well, because you did this, we will do this. But the demands are, you know, well, 
Toyota demands to take, let me use this as an example, to, to take uh, 250 pounds from my account monthly because I took their car away. Okay, <laughs> I drove the car, so that's the benefit I am enjoying. But the, so because I'm enjoying the benefits of the car, they, they have some demands that every month I must, they must take this from me. Listen to this. Even your Christian work has demands. The Lord will protect me. The Lord is uh, my God is good. My God is good, though. Hey, he's good, though. You know, we Christians, everything now double, double. My, my friend, can you get real? <laughs> it, it does not work. What is the basis of, of your double, double? What's the basis of, you know, the songs that you sing? What, is there a contract? Is this something you just open your mouth and said on the bus? Or did you actually go to an altar <laughs> and, and make a vow. And is that, listen to this. I remember, as I begin to round up, I remember the day I made a covenant, you know, I remember the day. And next week I will talk, you, talk to you about, you know, how I got into covenant with God. And I will tell you about the covenant demands of my life. And I will tell you, listen to this. The things that you see operative in my life is as a result of covenant. When I prophesy, it's because I have an agreement with a spirit. That if I do this, if I do this, he will show up like this. And, 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 and there's also a devotion required. Listen to this. There, you will not be surprised if I get a phone call and they say, hello, so, so, and so. And the phone is not cut off. Why? Because <laughs> I pay my O2 bills monthly. But the guy who is, hello, hello, and the thing is cut off, uh, he doesn't pay it regularly. So the same way, listen to this. You, when you say, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I declare. The issue is, when last did you pray your bills monthly? When, when last did you pray, not pay? The covenant demand on your life is that, you know, God says it requires a level of devotion. And that devotion might, might be is maybe something like, I want you to come to me daily in prayer. But then uh, you come only when you're in trouble. You do pay as you go. No, 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 no. In, in the matters of covenant, it's not, it's not pay as you go. It is, more, it is a, it's a committed, it's a, it's, a, it's a covenant commitment. And so as I begin to end, let me just show you one or two things very quickly. Yeah? So... You know, the covenant of supernatural protection, I want to use that as an example. You know, my, my, my sons, when they were in boarding school, all of a sudden, God would just show me stuff in a dream. I'm not asking him. I, even I am perplexed that this is about to happen to your son. And I check, uh, uh, Tony or Tola, so, 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 he say yes. And then the Lord says, yeah, the reason why I'm doing it is because you pay your subscription. <laughs> and when I say, we had an agreement you, 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 first of all, made that initial sacrifice. And that's what usually happens. There's a, first of all, a, a, a big payment. And then to show your commitment, but then it, is that you meet the covenant. And then uh, as a result, yeah, you, make your, you meet your covenant demands, but as a result also, I, I am a covenant-keeping God. And part of your covenant is that I will protect you and your family members. And I will protect anybody that is under your jurisdiction. My question to you, ask your neighbor, say, are you meeting your covenant demands? Yeah. And then say, and, and you expect covenant protection. The question is, listen to this. This thing, the Bible says, whatsoever we sow, that is what we will reap. And <laughs> when you look at scripture, I mean, that there's a young lady in our church that I keep picking up. I keep picking up, you know, and I keep, well, even when she hasn't told me who she's dating, the Lord reveals the name of the person, and then when well, he, he reveals all sorts of secrets. And, you know, each time, one day, I, had, I she didn't have to tell me. I knew that if not one or both of our, past, our, our parents must be pastors. She says her, her father is, is late, but he was a pastor. I said, it is because of a covenant that your father had 
And that covenant is still at work. That if that that covenant is such that even in his death, it is working on his behalf. That his children will not make mistakes. So what is it? A spirit. <laughs> there's a certain spirit, a supervising spirit that is ensuring that if she's in the right church. And in that church, they, I mean, that's what you call supernatural help. The pastor is picking up names and saying things that she can never know about. That's the power of a covenant. Just even being in the right church is, is, is extraordinary help. I, I, I end with this. This is, this is how the covenant keeping God works. He says, I am the God of Bethel, where you are anointed. This is in Genesis chapter 31, verse 13. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of the land, and return to the land of your family. Listen to this. When you are in, in covenant with God, God will show up to, to you say, and remind you, remember that? You remember me? That you spoke to and said you made a covenant. Okay, I'm the one here now. Please get out of this place. They, they, they want to destroy you. I pray that your covenant keeping God will wake up on your behalf. Then the Bible says in Genesis 31, 24, it says, And God spoke to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night and said to him, Be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. You see, when you are in covenant with God, God will warn your enemies in the dream. You didn't, it's not like if somebody is, is fighting you and you say, Lord, help me fight this. No, you don't even know they are fighting you. But they know they are fighting you. And then God wants them. God, you see, if you touch that guy, I will deal with you. You will die a, 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 a bad death. That's, that's covenant. I see God fighting on your behalf. I see God fighting on your behalf. And then he says in Genesis 31, 29, it is in my power, to, it is in my power to do you harm, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, be careful that you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. A covenant man might look weak, but he is never alone. A covenant woman might look weak, weak but she is never alone. But the problem is, is if your altar is not strong enough, you become victims of demonic altars and this is my prayer that even in this month of god's power that your modem will be activated <laughs> that and those of you who who, who already have activated uh, uh, modems that as it were that you will you will meet your subscription payment in the place of prayer let's stand up as we pray let's stand up as we pray